Hey guys, welcome back to the OMTK platform tutorial series. In this part we're going to be looking at how to create a level and load it in from a file. Now I want to go into a bit of acquisition before I get started to point something that I feel like is not talked about enough. Oftentimes in programming the engine we think of how we're going to load in a particular asset, in this case a level, and what the best way to design the format of the asset would be for loading it in. However, we often neglect the fact that the asset will have to be created by someone and the quality or creative aspect of that asset can make or break your game. The reason I bring this up is that we could do this in literally an infinite number of ways. For example, the original way I was going to go through in this tutorial is simply a text file that would look something like this. This works just fine, you can edit the level, but I found that come design time, I'm at a loss for ideas of level designs. And I think a large reason for that is that I simply just can't imagine what the level will be like in this simple crude format. So after some thought, I decided to go a different route in these tutorials. Now this will add a layer of complexity to the code that I originally had not planned, but I feel the pros of having a full-fledged editor will outweigh the cons. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to use this open source program called Tiled to create, save, and load your levels into the game. Now this means that it's going to take a couple more parts than I had originally planned to get all of this explained and implemented, but I hope at the end you will see the usefulness of taking this route. However, if you do want to go the text file route, I will upload a version of the source code that uses the method so you can look at it and see how it's done, but I'm not going to be making a full video tutorial on it. Alright, with that out of the way, let's look at how to download Tiled. You're going to want to go to mapeditor.org or follow the link in the description. That'll bring you to Tiled's homepage. And you just click the download button at the top there. And then you just click on the link according to your OS. I kind of assume you're using Windows since you're using Visual Studios if you're following my tutorials correctly. And then that'll download and install it for you. It should be pretty straightforward from there. Now once you have it installed, we're going to go ahead and run it. So you can either start it from the start menu here. Or you can go into the install directory. By default, it installs to your program files times 86 if you're on a 64-bit system. And you'll get something like this. We'll go ahead and go new here. And we're going to have an orthogonal orientation. Change the tile layer format to XML. The render order will be from right to down. And for width and height, 40 and 40 it should be all right. For the tile size, we need to change it to 128 by 128 since that's the size of our tile sheet. And go ahead and click OK. That'll create a new map for us. It's kind of zoomed in here, so we're going to zoom out. And you can do that by pushing Control minus. That's a little better. Now I'm not going to go too in depth on how to use this, but I will do a little overview here. As you can see up in the top we have all our tools, on the left side here are the tools for editing the tiles, and on the right side are the tools for editing objects, we don't have an object layer right now so we're in tile mode. Over here we have our layers panel, you can see we only have one layer called tile layer 1, and this little icon lets you know that it's a tile layer. The difference between tiles and objects is that objects can be placed with pixel perfect precision so they don't have to correspond to a tile or a grid space. We have our tile sets window over here. This will contain our tile set PNG, and then we have a properties window down here, and this will change depending on what we have selected. Right now we have the map selected itself, so we can change the map properties. So what you're going to want to do first is make your tile set, so we're going to go new tile set here, and we'll call it tile set 1. For the source, you're going to want to hit browse and then get to the tile set 1.png I had you download the last part. You're going to want to uncheck use transparent color, since we already have transparency in that PNG. Tile width and height need to be 128 by 128. The margin will be zero and the spacing will be zero. And then go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, we have our tile set loaded in here. And we're going to go ahead and click on like 33% here in the drop down so we can see it a little easier. And now you can actually select tiles here. So if we select the block tile here and we're in stamp mode at the top, we can draw blocks. And we can also draw platforms if we click on that, put platforms in, as well as ladders and ladder platforms. We can also use the fill bucket tool here. For example, if we wanted to fill the map with blocks, and we can use the erase tool to get rid of them. We can also like copy stuff if we go right click and do the rectangle tool here. Then we can stamp that out everywhere else. And we can also push Control Z to undo actions and Control Shift D to redo them, as well as a myriad of other useful tools. So I'm going to go ahead and create a map really fast here. Something like this will suffice for now. Now we're going to want to add the player start position. We're going to do that by adding an object to represent where it should start. So if we go over here to our layers and we do new layer, and we'll do add an object layer. We'll go ahead and name it Object Layer 1. The name of these layers will be important a little bit later when we're actually loading it into our struct. And with the Object Layer selected, we'll go to the Rectangle tool here. And we'll make a rectangle inside one of the grid spaces here. And if we go back to the Selection tool here and select it, we can see its properties in the Property window here now. And we're going to want to change its name to something that we can recognize. So I'm going to change it to Player Start Pose. And then we're also going to add the Exit here. So same thing, Rectangle tool in one of the grid spaces. And one thing to note, it doesn't actually matter the size of the rectangle, we're just going to be using the top left position of the rectangle. So if I were to make a rectangle like this in our code, it's going to count as this grid space here. Anyways, back to the selection tool, select that, and we'll name it Exit. And that should be all we need for our level at the moment. So we're going to go ahead and click Save here. And let's go ahead and save it into the content folder of our project here. And it's going to save it as a TMX file here. You can also save it as an XML or a TXT. Any one of them will work. And I'm just going to name this Level 1. Click Save. And now if we actually go look at the file that it just saved, 
and I'm going to edit with Notepad++. You can also edit it with Notepad. You can see we've got a bit of a hefty chunk of XML here. So just a quick overview, you have a map tag that encompasses everything. Inside that map we have a tile set, we have our layer here, and inside that layer we have a list called data, which has quite a few tile objects with a GID, and that'll be important later, since that determines what type of block it is. And then after that layer we also have an object group, and in the object group we have two objects. So it's a relatively simple XML document here, which makes it easy for us to pick out the stuff that we need. So now we're going to jump back over to Visual Studios here, and we're going to add that TMX file, or XML file, whatever it was, to our content folder. Make sure you change the properties on it so it copies over to the output directory. And there we are. And now in our level class we're going to make another constructor here. I'm going to do public level and we want to pass in a string file path. And before I forget we also need to be using system.xml. So first off we're going to encapsulate everything in a try catch statement here. So that way if anything goes wrong while loading, we can catch it and make an empty level regardless. And we're going to send out a message to the console real fast. And you can put whatever you want in here. I'm just going to give it a bit of info about the file path that we're loading as well as what error was thrown. And then what we need to do is we need to copy our other constructor here, the one that makes a blank map. And set like a default width and height here. I'm just going to set it to 2020, and like before, this will make a blank map for us. And then we can actually get into our try statement here. So the first thing we need to do is actually open our file. So we're going to do using file stream stream equals new file stream. We'll pass it file path as well as file mode dot open, since we're opening the file, and file access dot read, meaning that we only want other things to read it while we have it open. That way no other programs edit the file while we're opening it. And then we need to make an XML document. We'll name this doc equals new XML document. Then we'll do doc.load. We'll pass it stream. First thing we need to do is get the width and height, and that's stored in the map tag. So we need to do doc.document element. And this accessor represents the first item in our XML documents, in this case the map. Then we need to do .get attribute. And first we'll do the width here. And this will pass us back a string, so we need to convert it to an integer and store it in a variable here. So we'll do int width equals int dot parse. There we are. And we'll do the same thing for the height. And now that we have our width and height, we can initialize our grid. So we'll do grid equals new block width height. Let's make sure we also set our local file name variable. And we'll set it to file path. And just in case we don't find a player start position, we'll set it to a default value here. So we'll do player start pose equals new point. I'll do like 1, 1. Now what we need to do is we need to get this layer here that's named tile layer 1. And inside we need to get the tile list and loop through those. And if you remember, we set the sort order to write down. And that sets the order at which it wrote these tiles out. Basically, we go to left to right and then go to the next line. And that's important because we need to set up our loop to make sure that we know what X and Y position we're reading at. So first thing we need to do is get the tile layer. So we'll do XML node, I'll name it tile layer, equals doc dot document element dot select single node, and it's going to ask us for an X path. Now the X path is a little bit different than a normal string. You can do some fancy things to make sure it selects the right node for you, and we'll be using one of those functionalities here. Now we need to get the layer node, but we also need the layer that's called tile layer one. And we do that by opening square brackets here, doing at name equals, and then apostrophe, it'll be tile layer one exactly as it is in the file. And this will pass us back the layer node that has the attribute name with a value of tile layer one. So now we need to get the list of tiles from the data node. So we're gonna do XML node list, we'll name it tiles, equals tile layer dot select single node. We'll pass it just data. And then we need to do select nodes, and we want to select all of the tile nodes. And that will return us an XML node list. So now we need to loop through these tiles. So we'll do four int i equals zero, i is less than tiles dot count, i plus plus. And we also need to keep track of what x and y position we're at, so we're going to set up a couple different variables here, x equals zero, y equals zero, and each time we need to increment the x value here. If the x value is greater than or equal to the width, we'll set it back to zero and increment the y variable. And we'll make sure we put this after our code here, that way it only increments after our first step because the first step will be at 0, 0. Now we need to get the GID for the specific tile that we're on right now. So we'll do int GID equals int.parse. 
Then we'll do tiles at i dot. And instead of doing get attribute like we did above, we can also do attributes, open square bracket, and pass it a string name. In this case, we'll pass it GID, and then do dot value. Now once we have our GID, we need to do a switch statement here on our GID variable. We'll set up the default here first. And one thing to note, and it actually tells us in this XML file here, that the first GID is one. So that means that our empty grid space will be one, and two will be our solid grid space, and so on. So if it's either one or anything else that we don't recognize, we'll do the default value here. So we'll do grid x, y equals new block, and we'll do block type dot empty x, y. Then we can copy this here and do case two. In this case, instead of empty, we're going to do solid. Copy this three more times. Three, four, and five. And those will be ladder, ladder platform, and platform. All right, sweet. So now we need to do about the same thing for the object group. So after our for statement here, we need to make another XML node variable. And we'll just call this object group equals doc dot document element dot select single node. And we want to get the object group. And again, we want to make sure we get the one with the name equals object layer one. And then we need to go list of all the objects in that object group. So we're going to do an XML node list objects equals object group dot select nodes. And for the XPACs, we just need to do object. Then we need to loop through all those objects. So we're going to do four int i equals zero i is less than objects dot count i plus plus. And we'll make a couple variables and assign them to the attributes of this object. We'll do int x equals int dot parse objects i dot attributes. And we need to get the x attribute dot value. And we'll name this like expose instead. Then we do the same thing for the y. And there we are. Now we need to do a switch statement. And we're going to do it on objects i dot attributes. We'll do it on the name attribute dot value. And we'll make a default, but the default won't actually do anything. First case we want to do is case player start pose. So if the object is the player start position, then the x and y values will tell us where the player should start. Now if you remember when we created the level and tiled, we set the grid size to 128 by 128. So now if we want to figure out exactly which grid space it should correspond to in our game, we need to divide it by those values and round it by casting it to an int. So we'll do this dot player start position equals new point. We'll cast it to an int. And we'll do x pose divided by 128. And again, cast to an int. y pose divided by 128. And again, this is why the top left corner of the object only matters, because this point corresponds to a grid space, wherever that top left point was. Later, once we have a way of representing the exit in our level, we'll want to do about the same thing for exit. But for now, this is all we really need from the XML file, and now we should be able to test this out. So back in our game.cs, instead of using the width and height overload, we're going to use the string overload so that it loads a file, and we want to pass it content level1.tmx. And if we go ahead and run this, you can see that we got our level loaded in. We can't exactly see if we've loaded in the player start position correctly, but we'll get to that in the next couple tutorials. But for now, this is it, so I hope to see you guys in the next tutorial.